It's like an addiction almost. I gotta keep going back. <laughs> Don't share that, you're a therapist. Are you sexually harassed by the orangutan? Pretty much. Okay. Yeah, and all of a sudden I'd feel like a finger go right down my butt. You know, when mama's happy, everybody's happy. <laughs>With TV ratings dropping, are beauty pageants an outdated relic of a sexist past, or are they empowering a new generation of women? Today, psychiatrist Dr. Vidushi Babur and sexy mama expert Alana Pratt are here. They both competed in pageants. And later in the show, actress Kelly McCarty, a former Miss USA, will join us to give her take on things. She starred on the soap Passions for seven and a half years. Great to have you both here today. Great to have you. Pleasure, Thank Dr. You. Babur. Mm -hmm. All right, so with uh, one female vice presidential candidate and an almost two, are pageants an outdated form of sexism against women? They're not outdated, they actually still go on, but I think what we really need to recognize is that the old style is really about female competition and that's the last thing we want with women and sisters in society exactly. today, is having more competition. We want more collaboration, more cooperation, more sisterhood, so I think we really need to be careful with pageants. Speaking of competition, I've heard some stories. One of our makeup artists used to work on a pageant, and she told me about uh, the women who would uh, steal the, the competitors' clothes. During, like the women, she said, always had to bring more clothes because they would steal each other's outfits. So like you're going to go be in the evening gown competition and you have no evening gown, and I guess the way it works, I don't know, I've never been in one, but, but if you don't have the dress, then I guess you can't, Then you're out. you know, yeah. Or you'll put it on and the zipper will be broken, and it doesn't just happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yes, you it doesn't. The tricks. Well, it doesn't just happen in beauty pageants. It also happens, I used to be a model. All mm. of a sudden, you'd be right ready to go on with only one high heel. Oh. And it also occurs in all sorts of different business situations. Oh, sure. you'll, you'll be there waiting for your you know, interview with someone, and someone will size you up and make you feel absolutely insecure. It's everywhere. Oh, actors do that on auditions, try sure. to suck each other out. Completely. Uh, Marathon, a friend of mine who does triathlons was telling me she was coming close to the finish line in the mm -hmm. race and a woman running next to her elbowed her mm. and uh, so th that's their way of elbowing you in the fitness or in the, fitness, uh, the, the modeling competitions as they uh, yeah. take the dress or she also said too there was a you know you'd have um, the the woman who you know on camera she was so nice and polite and then she'd get off camera and she'd be a real pardon <laughs> me she'd be a real bitch can I say that yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fine with me, but that's what right. she said you know that that's uh, so do you see that a lot I mean were there dual personalities a lot you know they were smiling on camera and then as soon as they got off camera actually kind of sounds like me today around here you know <laughs> you're being so nice with now Greg <laughs> yeah I know I was yelling and screaming earlier you know, but, uh, I just there is that negative team. side to the competition of course but then there is also a positive side which I've seen quite a bit and majority of my pageant experiences have been good. Mm. I've seen the support system backstage where we're helping each other up with their zippers. We're actually helping with the makeup. So I've seen a lot of that as well in majority of the times and I think the cases that we do s tend to focus in on in the media or we hear about tend to be the negative the unfortunately. Negative, of course, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, I guess the more sensationalistic. Um, but now you've both competed in some pageants or are involved in these and what have you mm -hmm. done? Well, I, you, she still does them. Can you believe it? Hot woman here. I am from a little town in Canada, and I was in a pageant, which really did focus more about your talents and your community service and cooperation. It was a very positive experience for me. However, as a sexy mom expert, I'm often asked, you know, should moms stay at home or should moms work? When really it's not even about that question, it's what's your truth? So with this, you know, are pageants good or are pageants bad? It's not really that question, it's what's your truth? What's your intention going into it? Is it to win? Well, then you're probably going to meet some catty competitive women. Sure. Are you uh, insecure about your body? Well, then you'll probably feel exploited and insecure when the girl's got bigger boobs than you do. <laughs> but if you go into it with a healthy sense of self-esteem, you want to express yourself. Just when I coached Lisa through Dancing with the Stars, yes. I was there when she got the phone call and she was really nervous. Well, for all good reasons, she was going to turn 50. 52 million people were going to see her thighs. But I sat her down and I said, you have to make an intention to do this for you, for the experience. You want those millions of women to see you do it just for the experience of it and inspire all women to show up and go for it in life for the experience, not just to win, not just to be better and create that sisterhood, not that competition. And you think she pulled it off? I think she did. She had a great experience and she faced all those places where she wanted, she, well, we all want to win. And she's such a brilliant woman, and what she does is so successful, but could she show her kids that mommy's doing something for the experience of it, and that to succeed doesn't mean I necessarily won, or success is actually something deeper. And that's the problem that's going on in society today, is that all the validation is coming from the outside in, not the inside out. 
Now, what about you? You are, as she said, you are still doing mm -hmm. pageants. I still compete. And um, just to add to what Alana said, for women it's become sort of a process of self-discovery through these pageants. I've seen lots of women come in after a broken marriage or being a single mom and just needing some way to pamper themselves. And, and pageantry tends to be that avenue for that self-empowerment, for boosting that self-esteem, to get ready, to feel good, and to look great on stage. Now, since you mentioned that, um, actually I'm curious what you think. Every once in a while you'll hear, I think it happened with Miss USA not that long ago, one of them, that um, there are requirements, I think, well, first of all, what, you have to be single or couldn't be married, mm -hmm. and what about things like that, or I don't know if you can have children, or, sure. you know, and all that. Are oh, those... I'm out. I'm divorced. I've got a child. Yeah. <laughs> Never fear, because there's a pageant out there for you now. Yeah. And what's happened the is the pageant, yeah. you know, <laughs> the pageant industry has changed quite a bit over the years. It used to be a very exclusive society, almost, in a way, because you had to be a certain age. You had to be a certain look, a certain height, a certain weight. Now it's turned into more of an inclusive industry where we're branching out and we're seeing now pageants for divorced women or that they can participate. We see different categories now. We see the Mrs., we see the Ms., which is the MS category, we pronounce it Ms., and that's for 30 and up, whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you're divorced. We're including everybody. So the switch has happened now from exclusivity to including everyone and anyone. And you're gorgeous, and you're from India originally, right? Yes. And so now there's like cult, all cultures Cultural are being pageants. Right. Well. You do mm -hmm. Indian pageants, right? Uh, I do. I've them. done yeah, India America, sure. South Asia. I've also represented India in several pageants as well, too. So it's a nice way to connect with different people, different backgrounds, and it's just been a wonderful experience for me. And and it's like an addiction almost. I got to keep going back. <laughs> Don't share that. You're a therapist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So as a psychiatrist, right, uh, right. you actually said that you're trying to blend. Yes. Um, Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm blending beauty health and health. And, and what I've created is a, it's a new concept and everybody's going to be like, what in the world are you doing? Because it's, it's not heard of. You, you don't hear people, at least a psychiatrist, going out there and competing in pageants, first of all. That's a unique thing. So I said, okay, let's take it one step forward and um, become very innovative and blend the two together. My passion is pageantry and educating people on mental health. So I've created a system called Wellness Pageants, mm. where we will have women competing, teens and probably women in their 20s, 30s, will still have different categories to include everyone in this educational experience where we're teaching everybody an aspect of women's mental health, whether it be postpartum depression, eating disorders, domestic violence. Everybody's going to be trained on these particular topics. And then they're going to go out and present this to the audience. So you have interactive learning going on. They are going to become trainers and then educate the public and the audience and compete in a pageant system at the same time. I think what I like about what she's saying is that we have to remember that even though beauty is an inside job, women are art. I mean, we're like a beauty pageant is like a gallery, an art gallery. We go to beautiful museums to see gorgeous art. So for women to recognize it is an inside job, but to feel confident that, yeah, it's nice to get dressed up. It's nice yeah. to be appreciated, have some attention. And then I like this idea of being more sisters together. That's what I do with my sexy mom work is really, you know, when mama's happy, everybody's happy. <laughs> so, so we we'll want. find out if mommy's happy in just a minute. We'll be right back. <laughs> And we are back with Dr. Babber and Alana Pratt today talking about beauty pageants. Well, you know, when you mentioned the sexy mama thing there, <laughs> um, again, part of it comes down to, though, I think in a way, you know, in a way some people think, you know, now come on, it's, it's a beauty pageant, it's just about looks. You know, mm -hmm. there's still that idea that is it just about looks and, and that, I mean, I know that the contests have changed and they'll say it's talent, but, you know, is it really just about the looks or what do you think? I mean, is it? Well, would you want to date a woman who is a beauty pageant person? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so is, well, that, is that attractive quality yeah. to have in the world or not? Like, I, I think there's some judgment around it, that it you really are only about your looks. And I don't know about you when you grow up, but I grew up being a dancer, and I remember the one day where I didn't win the competition, and I was crying because I had validated myself from that outer experience. And I remember my dad giving me this little plastic trophy and remembering, he goes, you're always number one on the inside out. Mm -hmm. So I think what's important is that when women do compete for jobs, for men, thank you very much on a date for uh, beauty pageants or modeling, whatever it is in this world we have to sort of compete. 
we have to recognize that women are beautiful and we are art and that is to be enjoyed and celebrated but not to be compartmentalized and that's our only worth and so to definitely have the beauty from the inside out I'm writing it's a, nice to have it on the outside too it is <laughs> it's, but here's the thing I mean I'm I'm blessed I'm tall I'm attractive and sometimes it's actually a hindrance right. because a guy that I might be really interested in is a little too nervous to talk to me and so it can even be a hindrance as well but what I think we want to know is that whenever we put on a little makeup we put on our favorite shirt you got your power suit on your favorite suit we feel good and what it does is it emanates who we are from the inside outside like you didn't just dress as a schlep today you look handsome you look oh, great well, thank you and, <laughs> well, well yes and there, it's, a, it's a way of saying I value myself I'm willing to take care of myself it's do, do you wash your car do you you know clean your house do you take care of yourself it's a statement of self-esteem and so I'm working on a, a book that will be launched very soon called How to Be Sexy and Stay Sexy, Getting the Love and the Attention that You Deserve. And we all think it comes from the outside in. My entire book is really about who we can be on the inside and all of those ways we can fill our tank up and nourish ourselves, so that we're radiating from the inside out and being magnetic for that attention. And there's the odd section about, you know, red panties and you know, <laughs> other, things, other things that make you feel okay. sexy, which I think are great. And to partly answer your question, I guess I would say, you know, I think it, you know, it's kind of a long-standing debate. I mean, maybe through human history, you know, like whether or not, you know, looks matter. And, mm. and I think in a way, you know, even if people say they don't or we feel like they shouldn't, but I think we all know they do. But I would say this, though, that even though I think that I will admit looks do matter to me when mm -hmm. I'm dating, mm -hmm. but you also have to have personality. I mean, for me, yes. you know, okay, maybe... If you don't have the looks, I'm not going to look as long. But if you don't have a personality, I don't care what you look like. Yeah. Because the date will be over pretty quickly. So you, you know, inside and outside. Yes. You know, can't, can't you catch you both? You know. Yeah, <laughs> balance. No, truly, beautiful on the inside is one of the most attractive qualities. And that's what you want to really teach the youth out there. It's just not on the outside because smart is beautiful. That's the message I send out. It's really, you know, the brains plus the beauty that matter. It's the whole package. And I think a lot of times when we look into the media, everybody's so focused on how this person is looking, how this person is dressed, mm -hmm. and we're not focusing on who's accomplishing what. A lot of the focus goes on somebody's looks and way of dress and style and not so much of their accomplishments. And that's why some of these pageant systems, I'm very proud of them, that have come out recognizing certain talents, certain accomplishments in the pageant industry, even though it started out as a pretty much a looks competition. We all know that. But it's, it's grown from that. Now if you take a pageant system and you look at the scoring these days, you will see that personality interview and even talent count a lot more right. percentage-wise yeah. than the evening wear or the swimsuit competition. Yeah, I know it's because I think Miss America, which again is one that struggled, you know, was an American institution for so many years, but lately has kind of, you know, fallen on harder times. Um, they don't even like to be called a beauty pageant, I think, or whatever. It's, it's scholarship a scholarship pageant. A, yeah, scholarship Achievement pageant. pageant or something. Yes, yeah. interesting, yeah. right? I remember when I did my pageant in, in my small little town in, in Canada, the experience was good because I didn't win. Oh, and I thought I would win. Oh, it was between me and this other girl for sure. Neither of us won. This other girl won, and we were both standing on stage, and I remember her saying, smile! I'm like, right! And I had, I was busted. I had really thought I was all of that, and I had to learn to be humble. I had to learn, why did I really do this? Ooh, I did want to win. Okay, so let's really look at life. Is that going to be the best way for me to go through life? And do I want to be there more for the experience? Do I want to be grateful for what I do have? And when I do win something one day, to not to really come from that place of gratitude and knowing that all these other girls are pretty great too. I guess I give the women credit too though, you know, when there's that moment where their first runner up is, and you know she has to stand there and <laughs> smile, smile and thinking, yeah. you, know, <laughs> you know what they really Well, if do, you approach yeah. pageantry not so much as, you know, a competition that's a do or die kind of situation, like I mentioned earlier, self-discovery, discovering who you are, because every time I've done a pageant, I've discovered and learned more and more about myself mm -hmm. and how to improve myself. And I don't go out there and win every one. And even if I do, I still go back because it's a learning process mm. and you learn who you are. Now, let me ask you, you know, this being L.A. and, and you know, I, I think it's no secret to you, you know, what you hear a lot about the young women in Hollywood. And um, I was looking at a singer last night, her music video from a few years ago and, and now her more recent music video. And there's been a major change in part of her body. What do you think mm -hmm. about 
augmenting yourself, you know, breast implants and that sort of thing, just to win the pageant, or, or to, to increase your chances of winning the pageant? Do you think there's a lot of that going on? And, and what do you think? Is it good, bad, indifferent? I think there are some systems that openly say we don't accept people that have changed parts of their body because our focus on the pageant is not looks. Now, do they actually check? Or verify? I don't or believe do you... so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe I don't so. Know. I mean, but I, I think it just depends on the system that you're participating in and what is written in the rules and the regulations because now people are starting to define pageants a little carefully and mm -hmm. monitoring them a lot more than they used to a few years ago. I have a very, I, I love my take on cosmetic surgery. Anything to an extreme whether we eat too much chocolate, whether you're just too nice. I mean, anything to an extreme is not good. So the people that are looking for validation from the inside out and get operation after operation after operation, that's an issue, that's a problem. We wanna address their heart and their self-esteem. But I don't see anything wrong with washing my hair, do you? I mean, we, we take care of ourselves. I try to every once in a while. You try to, exactly, yeah. right, right. So we're in an age where there's an ability to, to change the way we look. I think to a little bit of a degree, if that's really gonna make somebody feel free, be more self-expressed, follow their dreams, follow their passions, fall in love, then to a small degree, a healthy degree, great. We work out, we dress well, we do we our wear hair, makeup, we, we wear, wear nice makeup, clothes. exactly. Yeah, sure. To a degree, I think it's absolutely fine. And anything to an extreme, you just want to watch out for that. What's that really saying? Well, exactly. we're almost out of time, but should there be beauty pageants for guys? There are. I, I, there are. There I know there are the fitness are. competitions and stuff there like that. There are fitness that, competitions. They, they, like we that, actually, but, um, I know um, the India America system does have an Mr. India America, oh. Mr. Wow. South Asia. They are there. I like to look at art. <laughs> uh, I would I would look. But. We'll be right back with Kelly McCarty. And we are back. Joining me now is actress Kelly McCarty. She's a former Miss USA from 1991, and she's been on, was on Passions for seven and a half years. The soap. Great to have you here today, Kelly. Thanks for having and you brought us. Brought along Marge here. This is Marge, my rescue one of four rescue dogs. One that's, of four rescue dogs. That's what I do. I'm. These days, well, you know, we, we were just talking about pageants mm -hmm. and, and the women were actually supporting the idea, which some people might find surprising because, you know, they've been criticized for being, sure. you know, by some feminists saying, you know, that they're <laughs> sexist or exploitive. And, mm -hmm. But you were Miss USA 1991. What kind of experience was that like for you? The pageant system was great for me, um, other than the day after I won, I realized that someone had stolen all my makeup. Stolen all back. your makeup, okay. So I woke up to do a press conference with no makeup, but besides that, it was really good. <laughs> so at least it was after you won though, right? Yeah, Instead everyone of, put uh, on their, you know, their their positive faces during the competition, oh. and then apparently they weren't happy necessarily with the outcome. Because <laughs> we were talking about too, about they were told me some of this, even though they were mostly positive, they were telling some of the stories about like mm -hmm. women stealing other women's dresses or, um, I don't know, like breaking the heels or something or uh I think that that happens um in the lower level pageants more so than like a Miss USA. I mean everyone's professional and oh, real okay. so that was really your experience. Everyone was there to win and of course every you know people are disappointed or whatever but that's the chance you take when you enter a competition. There has to be just one winner. And even personality wise did you think for instance because somebody else commented you know that like on camera they can you know they were all smiles but then as soon as they got <laughs> off camera they were you know. i think that that's what everyone wants to believe that there's just cat fights going on and the reality is the girls that are entering these competitions um have very very similar interest and mm -hmm similar goals so I, I ended up getting along great with with these girls actually more so than probably other women that I grew up with. Oh. And I should say so you were from Kansas you were actually the, I checked the, the, the computer and you were the only I think the winner from Miss USA yep. from Kansas to yeah, this day. so far. And um, California and New York have had most of the winners and you went actually, on Actually Texas. To, oh Texas that's right yes yes, yes <laughs> I'm sorry. And uh, you went on to represent the U.S. in Miss Universe and placed fourth, yeah. I believe. I think there were 74 countries there, so it was it was a pretty cool experience. And then as a result of that, you said you got to travel the world and... I did. I, I traveled. I went on a, a USO tour for a month all over Europe right after the Gulf War was ending and mm. spent a lot of time with the military. And uh, I went to China. I went all over, and that was definitely the 
best part of winning the crown is just the traveling and and people say it it's cliche but it's not it's like just spending time with with people in in different parts of the world it's pretty cool but you said too though one of the main reasons you went into this was that you wanted to get into acting yeah is that i wanted to get out of kansas mm. as fast as I could and I met the director of the Miss USA Kansas pageant and he's like you gotta do this and I'm like whatever it takes so I entered um, three times the third time I won Miss Kansas and then that was it I, I really never imagined that I was actually gonna win the title I just didn't but he kept telling me that I could so anyway it worked Stuck out with it. yeah it worked <laughs> out. so how did you go from Miss Kansas and and runner you know one of the runners up for Miss Universe to passions uh, for seven and a half years you Lots played a of auditions your, your, your publicist by the way said you were a can I say that said you were a yeah. psycho bitch is yeah, that I was a local psycho that, bitch oh, okay. um, and I started out really nice and never in a million years but it's funny it's like the booms are always on we're from the producers booth even when we're at a on a break and I was always like saying God, I wish I could play crazy, you know? <laughs> and they heard and you. one day, I swear, maybe someone heard me because it was <laughs> in there. And I'm like, they're going to write it. I'm going to go for it. And I just sort of like started taking it to that crazier place. And they started writing for it. So it kind of, it, it kind of snowballed into just like this sick, sick person. And it was the most fun. I mean, I, there's no fun in playing a nice person. It's a bore. But if I can know that I'm going to wake up and pretend to kill somebody yeah now i and saw the scene on youtube where you were what wrapping your mother in duct tape in duct tape um what was that all about you were, you tried um, to kill your mother, yeah I, I tried to kill my mother time and time yeah. again yeah. i hired an orangutan to to be her caregiver because of course an orangutan can't talk <laughs> and tell the police all the bad things i was doing so and the, you said the former nurse that i had hired to change my mother's diapers etc cetera, etc cetera, she started get, catching on to what I was doing. She started calling the police, and I'm like, you're out. The orangutan is in. <laughs> <laughs> and you actually worked with that orangutan for three or three and a half years or something like that? I did. Soap? He became just like, just so dear to me, and I, I think about him all the time. And funny enough, many times during the scenes, they're very sexual um, beings. So I might be sitting in front of him on the floor and he'd be on the couch and I'd be wearing some like low-rise jeans or something and I'm like in this big monologue. You know how they give you on soaps, it's like three-page monologue and you're just like trying to get through it and then all of a sudden I'd feel like a finger go right down my butt crack. Oh my god. And he'd be like, <laughs> Yeah, really? and then wow. try to keep a straight face doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so he's sexually harassed by the orangutan. Pretty much. Okay. Yeah, he's always trying to like cop a feel and stuff. It's pretty funny. Wow, so they're actually attracted to humans. Oh, very much so. And as they get older, they get even more sexual. I'm sorry, so. I can't. I was, I was going to say, I'm sure it was only one direction, right? There was no interest in the orangutan, I'm sure. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're married. You've got a husband. Also he now, was a so, really good yeah. kisser. <laughs> the husband or the orangutan? <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't a while he tried to tongue me. It was very cute, though. Uh, but I'm and, an animal person, so obviously I'm okay with it. Now, was there like an animal trainer there the whole time? Or oh, something? yeah. They always have animal trainers. What and was like, he doing when the animal was reaching for it? Well, if we're rolling and, you know, on a soap, you're just trying to get through the scenes oh, yeah, and yeah, keep yeah, moving. Yeah. So there's nobody going, cut. The orangutan is molesting the actress. <laughs> it's just like if she can keep a straight face, which I usually did, um, I, we just keep going. So sometimes I'd look back on, on some of the episodes and I could tell when it was happening, but no one would notice. So. <laughs> well, um, I, I don't know if you've kept in touch with the orangutan or not, but I know now that, you've, as you said, you've got four uh, rescue dogs. I do, I do. Um, uh, I am very much into uh, encouraging people to rescue their dogs at the local shelters and the rescue organizations versus going to a pet store. Um, because the pet stores bring in puppies from puppy mills, which are 99% of the time going to be very sick, they may die on you, and we have a very big overpopulation of dogs and cats, so I just really encourage people to spay and neuter and check out your local pound. People think that they're not going to get a good dog or cat from the pound, but as you can because see... Because they have to put a lot of animals to sleep, right? They That's put um, the, approximately 8 to 12 bi uh, million dogs go into a the shelters just in the United States every year, and 60% of them never come out. They're euthanized. 
Are you involved? I know there's a proposition now in California, or I've been getting a lot of emails mm -hmm. about, um, well, what's that all about? This um, actually, animal? the law passed today oh, pass? that um, oh. we are required as um, dog and cat owners to spay and neuter. If you don't, you will get fined. And it's just such a great thing, and I hope that it trickles throughout the rest of the United States and people really catch on, because we've got to get a hold of this. There's just way too many dogs and cats being disposed of, and they deserve to have a good life. So. Well, former Miss USA and actress for Passions, Kelly McCarty, thank you very much for thank being you. here today. And Marge, thank you as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you next time.